Yeah, welcome back, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining again. Uh, what a wonderful time. And thank you for uh, such uh, wonderful faces that I can see as well. OK, you guys are doing well, shining. OK, <laughs> great. So we are continuing with our, our topic that has to do with uh, exposing the greatness in you. And uh, we are taking um, six tools. 6P2s, and uh, we talked about, uh, if you can remember, we talked about our past, we talked about our present that will drive us, drive us to our purpose. Then after that, we'll talk about uh, planning. Then uh, from planning, we'll move on to pursuit. After pursuit, we'll move on to what? Perseverance. So please don't forget, 6P2s. We have worked on um, our past. Today, we are going to continue with our present, but just a, a little bit of recap of what we did. Um, we said that um, our paradigm has to ch change or shift. We talked about that greatness is the ability of any one of us taking control of our minds and putting them into putting our mind into useful uh, uh, purpose. And uh, we went ahead to talk about um, our past. We talked about how our surroundings uh, can create or can determine what our future or our present is. Then we took some assignments and uh, most of you came back, in short, you came back with a powerful assignment. So thank you so very much. Today, we are going to talk about uh, the present. But before I do that, I decided there's something very important that we have to talk about. You know, like I said, the, uh, this, this class, it's not something you can get even in the university. You cannot get it in the PhD programs. We are talking about life, life. So it's more about the physical things that we encounter on a regular basis. So we want to talk about time, time management, not just the one that you, you know, that has been taught in the class or even with uh, empl employees and employers. No, we are talking about uh, practical time management. And one thing we need to know is that time is our most precious resource. Time is our most precious resource. And time has been given to every one of us, everyone. We are all equipped with time. So I want to talk about time before we go to our uh, present. I want you to understand that time is equal to life. You cannot differentiate time from life. And there's a golden rule that has to do with time. That golden rule is something, listen to this carefully. Time must not be wasted. Time must be converted. That is the golden rule. Now, if you break it down, it can take us to another, it can take us for another one year to elaborate it. But here this golden rule again. Time must not be wasted. Rather, time must be converted. So time equal to life. Either you waste it or you invest it. Now, what is the definition of time? This is the dictionary definition of time. It is indefinite, continued process of existence. Indefinite. It continues in process of existence and events in the past, present, and future regarded as a whole. So time plays together with the past with the present and the future. And time is indefinite. It continues, it progresses. The next one is this. It is the ongoing and continuous sequence of events that occurs in succession from the past through the present to the future. You can see, that's why we started by talking about the past we are talking about the present today, and we cannot talk about that if we don't talk about time. So it's quite very important. Before you got to where you are right now, you started somewhere from zero. 
So there was a time of your past. That time of your past is equal to your life. Time is the inevitable progression into the future with the passing of the present, present events into the past. The inevitable progression, progressing into the future with the passing of today, which will become a yesterday. Because your today, whatever you do your, to, to your today is going to account what is going to happen tomorrow, but also be part of your history, simply means of your yesterday. You can see where I came up with these uh, six Ps, that there's no way you can uh, discover your calling, your purpose, your life goals without going back to your past, coming to the present, and now forge ahead for your future. I hope it's making sense now. Now I continue. Time can never be separated from life. They are inseparable because time is built into life and life operates in the circumference of time. See, you cannot separate yourself, your voice, your words from your body. Any time that you cannot speak simply means you either in a coma or you are gone. The same thing with time. Time and you are the same. Your life and your time, they go a parallel. You cannot separate yourself from your time. You yourself, your life is your time. You waste 20 years of your life, your time. You have actually wasted 20 years of your life. I repeat again, if you have wasted 20 years of your time, you have actually wasted 20 years of your life. If you have invested 20 years of your time, you have actually invested 20 years of your life. So time is very, very important. It is one of the greatest resource that God gave to humankind. Everybody, we are all, we have one quality. We have, uh, we have been given this particular wealth. It is wealth. It is, not, uh, it is not just something we play around with. It is wealth that has been given to everyone. It doesn't matter your class. It doesn't matter your, uh, your circumstance. Every one of us have been given time. Now, if I continue with time, actually, it's going to take me the whole day, but I want to be brief. Therefore, every time wasted is equivalent to time wasted or life wasted, I repeat. Therefore, every time wasted is equivalent to life wasted. And time well spent is also equal to life well spent. Time should be treated equally as life. People pay a lot of money to protect their life but they fail to do anything to secure that time. People will do everything possible to pay for security, but they do nothing because they don't understand the importance of time or the import of time or the, or the value of time. They don't do anything about it. Now, this is one of the quotes I want to share with you. Anyone who takes your time is a thief. Protect your time it is what makes up your life. This is, uh, this is powerful. I'll continue with time again. The functions of time and also the values of time. What are the functions of time? Time starts with a second tick. It continues to a minute. It runs down to an hour. It moves on to a day. It moves on to a week. It moves on to a month. It moves on to a year. From one second, it begins to move. So what do you do with that second? See, it depends on how you treat one second. It depends on how you treat one minute. It depends on how you treat one hour. How you treat a day, that will also de determine how you are going to treat the week the month and also the years ahead. We talked about that time is indefinite. What does it mean? Simply means time lasts for an unknown and unstated length of period. It's indefinite. The point is this, you can't even stop it. You can hold it. You either waste it or you invest it. Time is progressional like we talked about. Simply means it is constantly 
ongoing. It progresses, it carries on, never regresses. It's never stagnant. It can never be stopped. You can see the qualities of time. You can see the functions of time. You can see how important time is. No matter who you are, you can't stop time. It cannot regress, rather it progresses. Time has got inherent power. What is inherent? Inherent simply means imbued, imbued. Time operates as a system and need no permission to function. It's a system. The same way that you cannot stop the sun or the moon is a system. The same way that you cannot stop the, um, maybe the raining season, the, for, you, for those of you in Europe, it's cold now because of the snow. You can't stop it. That is the same way you cannot stop time. Now, what are the values of time? Time is one of the greatest and ultimate resource given to each creation by the creator. Time is equal to life and life is time. Now there's a quotation from uh, our Holy Scripture. It says, all the stages of my life were spread out before you. You here means God or our creator. It says the days of my life are prepared before I even lived one day. So before you were brought to this earth through your parents, there was a time that had been set for you. Everyone has got a spirit date. There's a time, there's a purpose assigned for you. Now, if you come onto this earth and you, don't, you are not able to understand the importance of time, you also don't understand your purpose. You waste your life here on earth but there's something that has been programmed for you. That is why sometimes you feel uncomfortable. Sometimes you see, you see yourself attracted to some certain things while others are not attracted to it. Why? Because that's the stuff you are made of. Now, these are quotations, or one quotation rather. A man who dares to waste one hour of his time has not discovered the value of time. Time is more valuable than money. Listen to this carefully. Time is more valuable than money. Time is more valuable than talent. Time is more valuable than academic degrees. It's more invaluable than even human intelligence because all of the above that I have mentioned, they all came into existence as a result of taking advantage of time. So we can see the value of time, the importance of time. So that's why I said, I cannot teach you or go into the present without talking to us about time. So we have seen how important time is. And from now, really we have to um, place demand on time. We will not play around with time anymore. Your time is you, your time is your life. So now let's talk about today's uh, topic. And today's topic is about our present. Remember, while we're talking about time, you not forget, it talks about it's something that moves from the past to the present and moves on to the future. So we have, we have taken our vehicle from where? From the past. And we're taking advantage of the time now we are here at the present. So what are we supposed to know or what are we supposed to do? I'll ask more questions in this and this will help you thinking and also give you uh, action, uh, call for action and also assignment. Because at this point with what we, have, what we have learned about time, you know really you have to sit up that now counts Yesterday is gone. You can only learn from yesterday. But there's nothing else you can get from yesterday except experience or lessons or figuring out your purpose. You dump that by the side after you have learned the lesson. But how about now? 
So while taking inventory of the past like we did, it is important to note that the present, sorry, it is important to note that the past is only meant for clues like I talked to us the last time. It is meant to be for clues and not to be a place to remain for long. You can only dwell long in thoughts of the past if the memories are very good. If the memories are not good, please don't remain there for long. I told us the last time I said that because we are creators, you know, it, it's in us for us to create. You can either create uh, negative emotions or you can create uh, passion. So it depends on you. If it's something that was very terrible, terrible situations that happened to you, if you dwell long, what happens? It will bounce back to you. Now, the same way, if there was something that happened to you that made you so joyful, maybe there was some contact that you made, or maybe you fell in love or something, you know, that uh, triggered your, your, your passion that you were so excited about. If you begin to meditate upon it, what happens? The same reaction that you had before will come back to you. So we are creators. So that's why I said, please, when you are working on the past, like I said, anything that, that is so bad or tough or things that were not rosy event, please don't do it there for long. Only pick up the, uh, the lessons and come out immediately. But if it's something good, maybe some achievement that you made, maybe some of the victories, some of the breakthroughs that you had, some of the things that you did that you were so full of yourself, you were so happy for yourself that you were able to achieve it. Now you can dwell there because while you are there dwelling on it, it will help you to even create something better. It will move you from one level to another. So it's important to look out for good memories, not the, not the uh, bad ones, as long as you are working on the past. But how about now? So evaluation stage, we are living in the here and now. Therefore, there are some questions you have to ask yourself. Now, like I said, I'm not gonna teach much about this, but these are questions that I'm gonna ask and uh, which we are going to have the answers even within yourself. So hence you are living in the here and now, and now matters. Tomorrow is not certain. Honestly, tomorrow is not certain, but nobody prays to die tomorrow. But what you have, you have now. Even the next one hour is not certain. What you have is what now. So work on now, deal with now. Whatever you want to do, make sure that it is done now. Work on yourself, your mind now. Take a decision now. Remember the law of cause and effect. Whatever you sow is what you reap. Whatever you do is what you're gonna get. So your tomorrow is determined by now. Your next year is determined by what you do now. So now is very, very important. It is even now that you can also talk about your purpose. It is now that you can talk about what you can do in the next 500 years. How do you do things in the next 500 years? Simply means if you are able to implement your purpose and you die in the next 80 years or 100 years, in the next 500 years, whatever you have done here will still be, will still be speaking. Simply means people will still remember you for who you are. So you can even live beyond here, but it starts now. So we need to concentrate on now, okay? And what are the questions? The questions are, what are your strengths and your weaknesses? What are the things that you know you can do? What are the things that you are good at doing? What are the things that you know you are not good at doing? What are your strengths and your weaknesses? That is one. Number two, what are you expert at? Actually talked about what do you, what do you do? What do you, what, what are you very, now let me use the word, what are you very good at? You know, sometimes we lack self-confidence, we lack boldness, but I really want you to begin to develop that, uh, that mentality. 
boldness mentality, self-confidence mentality. Actually, there's nothing any one of you cannot do. There's absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing. The only thing you cannot do are things that nobody has ever done or whatever has not come into your mind. Or somebody has done it before or it has come into your mind, but you don't know the principles to get it done. Or you know the principles to get it done, but you are not disciplined enough to get it done. So these are the things that can stop you from achieving anything. Then the last one is this. If you know the principles and you are disciplined to do it, if you are ready to pay the price, because there's nothing without a price, everything has got a process and also price to pay. So what are you expert at? What is it that you are good at? The next one is what else can you do apart from what you are doing now? You know, like I said, um, we are as a product of our environment, of our background, of all the teachings that we had either from uh, our religion, from our parents, from our teachers and all that. And because of that, these are the things that has molded us to who we are right now. But within your subconscious mind, there are things that you know you can do. But maybe because you have not been exposed to it, you have not been exposed to it. Nobody has given you the chance. Maybe your parents did not give you the chance. Maybe friends around you, even school, did not give you the chance to explore those areas. Now, I want you to think about that, okay? There are some things within you, you know, your mind tells, I can do this, or there's this hunger in you to do it, but you have not been exposed. You have not been given the chance or the opportunity, all right? The next one is avoid comfort. You know, comfort is a stagnator. Comfort limits people. Be very, very careful. Whenever you get to your comfort zone, actually you are limited. That's why um, Franklin said, uh, Benjamin Franklin said that many die at 25, but they are buried at 75. Simply means when they stop dreaming. So they got to a place of comfort. You have started work, you are working with uh, maybe IBM, you are working with uh, Big Gates or whatever, all these top companies and you are paid handsomely. You know, you stop dreaming. You think that's where your life ends. So avoid comfort. Rather, commit to research and self-improvement. I'm going to help you on this, all right? Research and self-improvement. I'm going to help you to be very proactive, you know, give you some, some things you may have to study. Now, regularly brainstorm yourself for ideas and inspiration. Or I put it this way, regular brainstorm for ideas and inspiration simply means it is good for you to always constantly think. Brainstorm, keep on brainstorming yourself, your mind. Exercise it, exercise it. The same way that you wake up in the morning, you will do some exercise and looking very fit. Your muscles are looking great. That is the same way you can also exercise your, your mind so that the muscles will be uh, firm and strong to be able to take care of challenges that can come. If you don't exercise your mind, it can just be like your body that is so loose that whenever challenges comes, you know, that food, excess food, it shoots up. You become shapeless. So the same thing with the mind. The mind has to be exercised on a regular basis. But please be careful of what you exercise your mind with. Let it be things that will be positive things that can help you, things that can help others. Let me direct you exactly the best place to uh, uh, corner your mind. Begin to look out for people's problems. Every problem that you can see, note it down. Note it down. Be begin to become a problem seeker. After problem seeking, you now look out for problem solving. So channel your mind to looking out for problems. Not looking out for problems to begin to lay blames accusing finger, judging people. No, 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 no. It's about looking for solution at the end of the day. The energy you are gonna to use to look for, to point accusing finger on someone to count wrongs is the same energy that you can use to seek for the solution for the problem. Einstein said, put it this way. He says, you cannot use the same energy that created a problem, okay, to solve the same problem. You need a higher energy. So whatever is the situation, 
begin to look out for solution, but first of all, look out for problems. Okay, if you want to make money, if you want to become great, if you want to be successful, look out for problems. Be a problem seeker, but not be a problem maker. Seeking means you are seeking to look for what? For the solution. Okay, the next one is always put your imagination to work. You know, I don't know if I, I told you this, the first thing actually that comes to our mind is called thoughts. Your thoughts, I call it what? Unspoken words. The thoughts that comes into your mind is unspoken words. Now, you see somebody who wants to write, like I told you the last time, okay? He puts down his pen at the point, he takes it up. He thinks, that means something came into his mind and there's a logic going on in the mind. Now he's trying to form it. By the time the mind forms it well, it's noted down. It can, now, when it's noted down or when it becomes like a sentence or, or, or it becomes uh, uh, a content, it becomes, we call it an idea. So it comes from thought, okay? From thought, when it's connected, it becomes an idea. And when you speak it forth, of course, the idea now is seen or heard of people, but it doesn't stop there. Now, when this idea is spoken or written, the next thing is to plan about the idea. After planning, you begin to execute. So thinking is very important. So always put your imagination to work. Now I go back again from thought to, uh, to ideas. The idea actually, before it gets to the point of planning, I omitted something. There's something that must have to be done, imagination. That idea you have to create, you have to begin to imagine, visualize on how these ideas can become concrete. If it's, let's say, a house, okay, you have an idea of a house. What happens? You begin to imagine how this house is going to be, how many rooms it's going to be, how many story buildings it's going to be, how many bathrooms it's going to be. Now you are giving it a shape. You are structuring it. You are, bringing, you are doing the imagination. You are visualizing it. Even your future, your calling, your purpose, the same thing. You have to give it life in the mind. So you work on, a, a, uh, on the image, imaginary uh, uh, section of it before you can put it down and it becomes now a plan on how to get it achieved, okay? So always put your imagination to work. Everyone can do that. Very, very important. I repeat again, I go back to number one. What are your strengths and your weaknesses? What are you expect at? What else can you do apart from what you are already doing? Avoid comfort. Rather, commit yourself to research and self-development or improvement. Regra regularly brainstorm for ideas and also inspiration. Always put your imagination to work. Now, call for action before the assignment. Note down every idea. Remember I said it comes as a thought. When it comes to the mind, as long as it is not uh, formulated, it's still a thought, a thought. But when it's formulated, it becomes an idea, all right? So pen down the idea, the inspiration, whatever message that comes into your mind, pen it down. You know, you may not have a book that you, you carry along with you, but your phone, there's a to-do list um, column on your, or your phone or app. You can use it. Somebody like me, when I'm going for my walk, okay, that's where a lot of ideas begin to flood into my mind. And what I do, I use my phone immediately. I note, I just note them down. So you can use your phone. You can also use a manual, uh, uh, do it manually by using a paper, okay? Write those things down. Also, I want you to begin to look out for books that you can read. Read books. If you really want to grow, you need to uh, uh, explore this uh, area of reading books. It's also good for you to listen to teachings and inspirations from people. All right? I will suggest to you some of the books, but I will not tell you all. Like I always tell you, I said, uh, the work of a coach or a teacher is to help you think and not to think for you. I, I don't have control over your life. You have control, absolute control over your life. So my duty is to help you, to aid you, to think or to see things from a different uh, uh, perspective. But it is now time for you to begin to do something on your own. So listen to teachings and also inspirational tips. 
it has to be something that is geared to your purpose. Don't, don't just anything, okay? Something that is geared to your purpose. Please, your time, 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 time. Don't waste your time. This will help you build on your past or your past experiences. Be very creative. Even while you are thinking, when you're having the ideas, be creative. You see, you, you are limitless. You are created to be limitless. There's no limit to what you can do. There's no limit of the kind of thoughts that can come into your mind. So be creative, be open, and also think big. Don't be a mediocre. If it's in the area of money, the, the richest guy now is Elon Musk. This guy was originally a South African. Originally a South African. This guy suffered. He was, there was a time he was living for, for, for only a, a dollar. He was living, managing a dollar per day. But now he's the richest guy in the world. That means he was able to think big. So I want you to begin to think big. Stretch your imagination. Stretch it. You have no apologies for anyone. Either people around you want to understand you or not. No apologies. Go ahead. Begin to think. Begin to stretch yourself. Let them say whatever they want to say. It is your life. It is not their life. So stretch your imagination. Don't just walk on, you know, like I was talking about building. Don't walk about only on two-bedroom apartment. You can talk about having an estate. Nothing stops you from having an estate. Those guys who have got estates and have all this money and all that, are they different from you? Do they have two heads? They don't have two heads. Do they have four eyes? They are not aliens. They have two eyes like you. They have the same set of mouth like you. They have the same set of ears like you. They are human like you. So you can stretch yourself to any limit. There's nothing you cannot achieve. So stretch your imagination beyond your current state. Don't judge yourself based on your current state. You may not have money. You may be in debt. You may be in lack. Please keep those things aside. This is just the circumstances you know, that will help you to move to the next level. Be prepared to turn your weaknesses into strength. So whatever could be your weakness, remember I talked about what are your strengths, your weaknesses. It is not for us to continue with our weaknesses, but it's for us to turn our weaknesses into strength. It is quite very, very important and uh, possible we can do that. Okay, now we'll go to the last slide, which has to do with uh, the assignment and we'll work on uh, three quotations. The first quotation is from uh, Zig Ziglar. It says, the past is your lesson. The present is your gift. The future is your motivation. I love that. The next one, Abraham Lincoln. It says, the best way to predict the future is to create it. So if you want to predict the future, you can create it. All these guys who are, both the Amazon guy and all these guys who are predicting the future, it's because they created it. The Amazon can tell you what is going to happen in the next uh, maybe 20 years. Now, simply means he's limited. He cannot tell us everything that will happen. But in the area of his area of, I mean, calling simply means of his purpose, uh, where, he, where he has, in quote, maybe control over the area of his market. He can say, this is how I want this market to be. This is where I'm going to get to. So he can predict the future. So if you really want to predict the future, you create it yourself. The next one is realize deeply that the present moment is all you have. Like I said before, you need to know this. This is all you have now. This is all that you have, okay? Make the now the primary focus of your life. You know, what we are doing today, what you do with it is going to play a long role to your future it's going to play a long, long role to your generation, simply means your kids and your great, your great grandkids and others. So you need to know that what you have control over, if there's anything that can be considered having control over, is what you can do right now. So treat it as you don't have another day to go, but still plan for tomorrow. 
But now that you have treated as says, I think that is the last that you have. Put in your best. And the assignments are this. Number one, what are you good at doing naturally? What is it that you can do naturally? Do you love singing naturally? Do you love dancing naturally? Do you love doing working out naturally? Do you love um, playing soccer not naturally? Do you like um, hanging out with people naturally? Now, hanging out with people could be good as well. And on the other area, if you're not careful, it becomes uh, terrible. You know, if you are good at hanging out with people, you can even sell whatever you have, whatever product that you have. You can link up with people. They, you, you become just a hot cake. People want to deal with you. They want to buy your product. They want to relate with you. So it's actually an added advantage, but you have to be very, very constructive, all right? Then you have to indicate, these are the assignments, indicate three areas of your strengths and your weaknesses. Areas that you know that you are good at, you know, and the areas that you know, oh, sorry, this area, I'm not good at that. Okay. Then the next one is, are you good at listening or doing research? Are you good at research? Let me start again this way. Are you good at reading or are you good at listening? You now, somebody like me, I'm, I'm better off listening than reading. But right now, where I've gotten to, I do the three together. I can even write. I'm writing books. And I also want to tell you, I'm going to share one of the books that I'm writing that has to do with time. Okay. I will share it with you. I'm not, I'm not done with it, but I'll share, share the much I have done with you so that you can use it to prepare yourself, program yourself as well. It's quite very important. Okay. So, and um, like I said, I'm good at doing the re uh, listening more, but now I read a lot. I also do research. And whatever I read from people, I go back to the internet. I, I, I source out other areas to make sure that what I read from somebody is exactly what it is. So I don't just pick up a, a, an information and begin to run with it because I know I'm a leader. People will listen to me. If they listen to me and I give them wrong information, what happens? They mess up. And when they mess up, it's not for my own good, neither will, be, will it be good for them. So I want to live an exemplary life that we further the next generation. So I want to make sure that I compare every information that I receive. I want to make sure that everything that I hear and everything that I, 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 I read about that I, I have, I'm able to judge it and bring a, a sort of a, a conclusion to it. So these are the things that we have to do. And, uh, and uh, we are going to continue next week with our purpose. So thank you for joining.